Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Escape Plans with Global Escapes. Um, we are here with our, our wonderful colleague, Paul, with Sincerely Paul in the UK. Um, before we get into all the exciting information that he's going to give us, um, we do want to take care of a few things. We know that um, changing travel restrictions, which change daily and are constantly updated, can be super frustrating and overwhelming. So we're here to help you guys with stress-free travel planning. Um, a few housekeeping things. Everybody is muted and in listen-only mode. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat feature, and we'll be glad to get you the answers that you need. And if you would like to schedule a consultation with one of our advisors, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Our phone number and our email address are in the chat, and we would love to hear from you. So travel is definitely on the rebound. Uh, and we are thrilled with it. We're so excited to get back to doing what we love. We're very excited to help you all get back to exploring the world the way you enjoy. But there are some things that you need to know. We're seeing some hurdles uh, to, to overcome as travel opens again around the world. Um, we're seeing limited hotel availability. We're seeing limited tour availability. We're seeing prices rise for all the travel components. And this is something that we've talked to you guys about for the past few months on our social media and our virtual events. So we wanna be sure that you are aware that this is happening. So now is really, really important to plan ahead. Um, we want you to have your plans made with excellence. We want you to have you know, plenty of availability to choose from so that you get the, the travel components that you prefer and can travel comfortably. And most of all, we want you to enjoy your travel and stress usually does not help you enjoy that. So we're gonna help you eliminate as much stress as possible. So speaking of planning ahead, I think all of you know that I love European travel and I love the UK. And I'm so honored to have one of my favorite colleagues with us today. His name is Paul Pugh and he is with Sincerely Paul. He founded his company in 2007. Uh, he's based near London in the UK and they offer very high touch, seamless exemplary itineraries throughout the UK. Paul has a history um, in the, in the um, the hotel industry, he was a concierge for over 20 years in some of the very finest hotels in London. And he was the youngest head concierge in the London market when he was only 23 years old. So this gentleman knows a whole lot about travel in the UK, about how to make things very customized to your preferences and how to make it excellent. So uh, Paul, has he has a long and distinguished um, resume. I don't really wanna steal all of his thunder. So I'm going to uh, welcome him and let him share a presentation with us today. So welcome, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you very much, Lee, Christine. That's very kind. Uh, 23 seems a very long time ago, uh, but that was uh, you're quite right. It was 20 years I was a head concierge of the Savoy in the Dorchester. And then back in 2007, I decided to set the company up. And uh, I've been the signature destination specialist now for uh, 16 years, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I'm going to share with you now a presentation, just a few slides um, for you to have a look at and explain a little bit more about what we do. So let me just go ahead and share the screen. Make sure we've got on. Okay, just want to check for me so we can see that. Yes, I can see it. Perfect. Okay. Um, so First of all, uh, we are the uh, we we offer our VIP meet and greet uh, at Heathrow and uh, and Gatwick Airport. So this is where we have our um, our own representatives that meet directly at the gates of the plane. Uh, I think this is going to become even more uh, um, popular as time goes on, um, as people want to feel secure as they get through the airports. We can fast track people through. There are stories on the news at the moment about long lines, etc. So um, we'll help to facilitate that. Um, on the top left there, you'll see uh, a, a little uh, logo saying we're good to go, uh, which was awarded to us uh, by Visit England six months ago, which basically means that uh, we uh, uh, adhere to all the safety protocols uh, around uh, COVID. Um, and we have checked out all our suppliers, our guides, our drivers, and all the venues that we go to, that we know what the social distancing is and what the measures are in place. Uh, we have our own transportation service, so we have a fleet of Mercedes, uh, the E-Class, the S-Class, the minivan. All our minivans have Perspex glass now, so there's a, uh, there's a partition between the driver and the customer. Um, we have access to vehicles up to 32 seaters as well. So just moving into, the, into London, um, some of our London experiences, we 
have over 250 qualified blue badge guides that offer a whole variety of different fun things to do. Um, these guides, it takes them two years to qualify. Um, I've met every one of them, or my team has, uh, and we'll provide anything from half day tours to full day tours to multi day tours. Just some examples here of private captures on the eye. Um, I love the picture on the right, which we took a couple of years ago, which was uh, we have these um, old fashioned Mini Cooper cars. It's great fun. You zip around the city, uh, you get great opportunities for selfies. You go around Buckingham Palace and you're waving at everybody, and everyone's waving back at you. It's, it's a real hoot. Some of the other elements that we offer uh, on the left here of the screen, we'll see um, it's the Household Cavalry Museum just off uh, uh, at Whitehall. Uh, we visit this, we have a director's tour in the morning before it's open to the public. Um, and if we've got kids involved, we can get them dressed up as the troopers. Uh, we'll go to the Tower of London and have private tours of the Beef Eaters. And we do a lot of fun stuff as well. So the, on the top right there, this is like a, a, a lollipop masterclass. So often if we're at the British Museum or St. Paul's, if the kids are getting a little bit bored or want to do something, the guys will say, who, who wants to make lollipops? And the kids put their hands up and then off we go to a little lollipop. Uh, uh, and also we're making afternoon tea, chocolate making. So we kind of inter integrate um, history with a lot of fun as well. Going out of the city, uh, there's lots of day trips from the capital. Some examples, we'll go to Stonehenge, Salisbury, uh, Windsor Castle, Hampton Court, Bath, Laycock. Um, go to the, uh, the gardens of Kent. Uh, we do a lot of private experiences in there, but we will tailor it to the client's need and interests as well. We have our own um, privileged access program. So this is kind of what money can't buy, but it can. Uh, so it could be anything from uh, visiting Stonehenge at dawn or dusk, um, rooftop tours of Hampton Court, uh, visiting the Crown Jewels at Buckingham Palace before it's open to the public, uh, we'll go to the Cabinet War Rooms, we'll be able to sit on Winston Churchill's chair. Again, that's all before it's open to the public. It's, that's a real cool experience. Uh, we provided that from, uh, two years ago for um, uh, a World War II veteran. Uh, we have some great pictures of him smoking fake cigars on Churchill's chair in the map room. Uh, on the top right there, you'll see uh, our steam train excursions. This is relatively new. It's only uh, two years old now. But these old fashioned steam trains, I always describe it, it's a bit like the Orient Express, but not as expensive. Uh, and they go throughout the whole of the UK. They're up in Scotland and Wales. Uh, they do shorter trips, which go from London to Windsor. It takes 40 minutes. But when these street steam trains turn up at the stations, there's steam everywhere. It's a, it's a really nice way to travel. Uh, and they've got the catering on board. It's, it's beautiful. We are a, an event ticket specialist. So that's theatre, concerts, sporting events. Um, here you see Wimbledon, uh, it's very big for us, you know, an official uh, supplier of adventure tickets for Wimbledon. The Warner Brothers Studios, where Harry Potter was filmed, uh, that sells out usually months in advance during normal times, but we have access to tickets on a daily basis. Uh, on the bottom right there, that's quite a nice picture taken at the Drury Lane Theatre. We have uh, what we call our red-coated butler service. So basically when the clients arrive, these red-coated butlers will meet the clients take them through to a room which is known as the Royal Retiring Room, which, yes, is where the Queen would go if she was going to see a show. But if she's not there, then we have access to that. Uh, and the clients will be served drinks and canopies. They'll be escorted to their seats, so they're made to feel really special. At the interval, the red coat butler comes back, meets them again, and then takes them back to the, um, uh, into the retiring room where they serve more drinks uh, before the second uh, uh, performance. Uh, filming locations, you know, the UK has lots of movies and all sorts of uh, um, uh, series has been uh, filmed. I'm sure you're familiar with the Netflix series uh, Bridgerton, uh, very, very popular. Um, so we will visit the locations if clients show an interest in these. So on the bottom right there, you've got the Royal Crescent and Bar, or you've got Hatfield House, Castle Howard in York, um, Highclere Castle, uh, where Downton Abbey was filmed, but making a second movie there now. Um, and we have access to tickets every day for that, even when, even when it's sold out. But also things like Outlander in Scotland, the new James Bond movie. We've got three, three of our guides in London that dress up as James Bond. They don't quite look like Daniel Craig, but they're still very good at what they do. <laughs> um, so the Cotswolds is you know, one of the parts of the world which I particularly love. It's about two hours from London, uh, just northwest. It's very, very beautiful, rolling uh, hills, beautiful uh, thatched cottages, country pubs. Um, we provide a lot of different experiences in this area. 
Um, one of my friends, his father owns probably the largest farm in the Cotswolds. And we got together four years ago and we put together some really fun experiences. On the bottom right is an example. We go to the National Sheepdog Champion uh, just outside Broadway. And we'll see, literally see sheepdogs from puppies to the grown dogs. Um, we'll watch how they get trained and how they move, move the sheep around. And it's real fun. Uh, we've got a local forger. When we go and visit him, he'll make up little silver coins for clients just as a bit of fun. Uh, falconry, which we provide in the farm, we'll visit stately homes. Uh, and there's also a local cheese making factory, also near Broadway, which supplies cheese to Harrods and Selfridges. So these are just immersive experiences, but we're working, with, as well as guides, we work with a lot of local people as well. So moving into England, um, these are just a few shots. Castle Howard uh, on the left, top left, which is another sort of Bridgerton location and Pride of Prejudice. Uh, on the bottom right, um, Poldark Country, which is in Cornwall, um, a beautiful part of the world. Uh, here we have some really wonderful experiences. We'll have, we can see the Cornish Peninsula by helicopter and by boat in the same day. We'll finish, uh, we'll visit a Cornish tin mine. We'll do sort of um, uh, foraging in the sea. We'll do all sorts of fun stuff and some great restaurants and some beautiful, uh, breathtaking scenery. And then the, on the bottom left and top right, Another area of outstanding natural beauty is the Lake District. There are some absolutely stunning hotels up there, uh, and it really is the, the, the great outdoors. Uh, and we'll provide things, again, like Falkenry, we do four by four tours, uh, walking, hiking, you can even cycle on electric bikes. So it's a, it's a really great way to explore. So we cross the border over Hadrian's Wall up into Scotland. Uh, we've been operating in Scotland now for some 15 years. Uh, in the in the city of Edinburgh, we'll obviously do half day, full day tours by visiting the Edinburgh Castle, uh, the Royal Yacht Britannia, which is on the bottom right. Um, we'll go out into sort of day trips, going up to the likes of um, St Andrews and uh, some nice distilleries there. And some of our um, experiences, just examples here. So the distillery on the bottom right is one of the smallest distilleries. Um, which is uh, north of uh, St Andrews uh, and we'll visit this privately uh, and we'll have sort of like a, a master vendor who'll come and show us how the process and the distill how the whiskey is distilled with some really nice tasting on the left uh, bottom left there we'll go walking with gun dogs into the countryside and see how gun dogs are trained and how they work so great exercise on the top left we've got um, if you want to learn how to make haggis uh, and taste haggis I mean it's the Scottish national dish uh, but we'll go visit there with one of, the, with one of the guys who's got the royal warrant who makes haggis for the royal family. And then on the top right, we've got um, one of our three famous bagpipers. Uh, and we can show you how to play the bagpipes or perhaps stop playing the bagpipes if you prefer, if you don't like the sound of them. Um, and of course, Scotland has like for over 400 castles and we'll visit everything from Cousin, Dun Robin. Uh, on the bottom layer, the left there, there's Blair Athol, which also has the distillery also has its own uh, private army. Uh, it's steeped in history. Uh, in this particular castle, we will provide lunch with uh, a local historian or librarian that can give an awful lot of history about the area, but it, it's absolutely stunning. And just my final slide, really, just to give some other images here. Um, on the bottom left, we've got um, Loch Lomond, we've got Cameron House, which we work very closely with, uh, Loch Fine on the bottom right. Uh, that's a picture we took when we took some clients there. We just had um, a, like a, a nice seafood lunch. Uh, the Kelpies and the castle, another castle, get up in Loch Ness and Oqua. So we we work um, with some real good people, uh, some great suppliers, some great experiences. And this is really just, a, a, I suppose, a taster of what we can offer. So I'm going to end my presentation there and I will stop sharing and then come back to you, Christine, just for a little chat. Very good. Okay. How do so, do? I'm, so I'm definitely homesick for the UK now after seeing <laughs> these beautiful pictures. Um, so on, since we ended on Scotland, let me ask you this. A lot of people here in the US can trace their roots and their ancestry back to the UK, whether it's somewhere in England or Scotland. Do you get a lot of requests for ancestry type tours? Do you handle that sort of thing? Uh, we do. We do. Um, it's like a tier system. Really. It depends how detailed you want to be. Uh, we have uh, three people that we work with uh, throughout the UK um, that we can give just like an overview. So if people want to know a little bit about like the clans of Scotland and where the name MacDonald comes from, then 
And we can just do that as like an overview. But if people want to really sort of go back much deeper and spend like a trip doing that, we can. It obviously comes at a higher cost on it, but we can do that and explore that. And then we get a lot of people asking us, uh, wanting to include some exposure to that as part of the trip. Um, mm -hmm. which we're happy to do. We've got people that can pull that together for us. A lot of our guides are, are, are well-versed in that. Yes. I will say that's something you guys do very well is that you are ve you're able to really get very specific with your customization. Um, I know in the past, I had a couple even who was building a home here in Georgia, and they really loved the idea of kind of the style of an, an English cottage or even like a small manor estate. And they wanted to design it accordingly. And I remember that you helped me plan for them. We put them in London. They did several day trips into the Cotswolds and other areas around London. And they were able to shop. Like you took them through the uh, antique storehouses there in London to pick things out. You took them through the villages and cottages. It was a stellar experience. And they have a beautiful home now, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for my invite. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are, there are lots of... Uh, if people are looking for something off the beaten track, uh, and that's what I've tried to sort of show on the presentation there. Yes, you know, we, we can do you know, highlights of Edinburgh, London, Glasgow, um, York, but if people want to have some uh, these immersive experiences, and they're not all necessarily expensive, they're just different. Um, so I found certainly when I'm working in the Cotswolds, it was, I you know, made connection with some numerous people that were local people that were able to unlock doors that other people that I knew couldn't. Um, and they made it so easy and simple. And it's, uh, and so we have clients that show interest. We have this one, um, it's one stately home. And I'm not, I don't think the Lord that owns it even needs the money, to be honest. I think he just wants to meet people. Um, but he'll open the doors privately. Uh, it's a sort of beautiful home. Um, he almost owns a village, I think, if I remember going to his property. Uh, He's got a huge fountain in the garden. But uh, as part of it, he'll you know provide afternoon tea or morning coffee with biscuits. Uh, sit down and happy to show you his artwork. He gets paid a, a fee for that. Um, but you will get a real feel for what oh, you know England was like you know hundreds of years ago in some of these properties. So mm -hmm. we, I think, the more information that we get, the better. So we are able to then customize it, and that's what we kind of look for. So often when we get an email or inquiry from an advisor. Uh, if it's if it's too vague, we'll come back and ask some more questions. We'd like to know more. Give us, you know, are the children, how old are the children? What, what are their interests? What are the parents' interests? If, if some people don't, some people listen only here for three days. We just want to get a snapshot of what you can do. And that's easy done. The real fun stuff starts when it's, someone says, well, we have, you know, I'm going to build a stately home in, in, um, in, in Georgia and I want to have a look at uh, some architecture. Um, and then we've got those people that we can pull together. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that I'm seeing a lot of that for, from my clients here in, in our area where they, they want to sit, they want to hit the highlights. They want to see the things that they should see. And they really, they're like, tell me what I should see. Like, you know, where I can't come home and, and not having seen this, but I see a lot of interest for getting off the beaten path, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I hear that a lot of, there are some areas that are more off the beaten path in England, especially that have been, have created a lot of interest because of you know TV shows that have been filmed there, I hear Cornwall was very popular um, before the shutdown, and probably will, will be again afterwards. Is that right? Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, Cornwall has always been. I mean, it's it's actually now since the pandemic, it's about, property prices have just skyrocketed, and that's just the UK people buying there. But you know, you had um, obviously I mentioned Poldark. Uh, you had um, I think the movie Rebecca. Some of that was filmed there as well, um, and that. Poldock was was popular here, but it was more popular in the States. So it, it surprised yeah. Doc, Doc Martin. I mean, uh, that's built yeah. around Port Isaac. And I'm not, I'm not sure if I ever told you the story that I think it was about three years, three years ago, I think I had a client that um, wanted to do a Doc Martin tour, which we planned. And we went to Port Isaac and um, Prince Charles and Camilla were launching a lifeboat there. And these clients were, still, were there in the line sort of been watching this and then Charles walked around and just happened to talk to our clients. And he called Camilla over because I think these were the only Americans in this group. And it also turned out the cast of Doc Martin were there. So they got to meet them too. I was like, oh, oh my goodness. I know. I've got, got a phone. I've found <laughs> my, my advisor and friend in California. So you don't believe what just happened. I said, I don't think we've charged enough here. 
but it was it was you know it was what lovely and it got some great photos and what a nice experience so but yes i mean it's um I, think the, I mean, it mustn't forget Devon and Cornwall. Devon as well, which borders Cornwall, is also very pretty. You've got some some beautiful hotels. Um, you've got the um, you know Bovey Castle. You've got two, two or three other really nice, you know, great country house hotels. Uh, Devon's known as the English Riviera. Again, it's so beautiful. It links that so nicely. Cornwall's more rugged. It's got nice, beautiful coastlines. It has a lot of sort of. There are some sort of like popular tourist spots like. Uh, Newquay, um, Padstow, um, which a uh, very famous chef, Rick Stein, has a, a big association with. But there are some real beauty spots, some real, I mean, just like St. Moore's is, is a Trisanthem, uh, some real beauty spots, and some just not, not necessarily big five star hotels, but just really nice guest houses, which are really well run and very comfortable. So you, mm-hmm. you get a real sort of a, just a more homely feel to it. I, I love, I love that part of the world. Mm-hmm. I think good accommodations is one of the areas that I see the most change over the past year and the, the most change coming down the pipe, whether people are interested in a private home or a villa or a small guest house and even hotels have really stepped up their game with the, with the sanitation protocols and, you know, some hotels are offering like, you know, contactless entry to your room and so forth. I've really been pleased with the improvements and it was really exciting to see a lot of the hotels in London approach their reopening and announce the things that they have put in place. It's, I've been very impressed. Yes, I mean, they have specifically London, which has, the, the, the country house hotels have done very well, but once, once they've been allowed to reopen um, mm-hmm. and prices went up significantly, but the, the city centre hotels, Edinburgh, London, uh, in particular, really suffered because London has, you know, some people say sometimes there's too many hotels, but come June, July and August, you can't get a room because it's it's so, it's so busy. Uh, but they have struggled with very low occupancies, but they have embraced um, the, the again, the protocols, uh, the safety protocols very well, uh, very <laughs> professional. And I think that um, the, you know, now the doors are open again. But again, the occupancies are low because we don't have that many visitors in but they are ready. And I do know a couple of my very dear friends have two hotels in London that they are now starting to get significant inquiries, not confirmed bookings yet, but significant, significant inquiries from July onwards. Uh, so I think um, uh, I, I think that's a, it's a, a time to watch what, what might happen in the future. I think we're, we're on the cusp of hopefully opening up again. And when we do, I think the floodgates will open. Everyone's coming to London, <laughs> let's hope so. Yes, they are. So let's talk a little bit about that. I know you are not a government official. You don't have all the answers, but tell me what you see in the next months to two months, in the next three to six months. What do you see coming down the pipe about when people might be able to visit again? Okay, so um, we have this traffic light system, which is in place at the moment. So that's obviously the green, the amber, the red. Um, Red means you have to stay in a hotel for two weeks. Uh, amber means you still have to have tests and uh, self-isolate for two weeks. Green means you don't have to self-isolate, you still have to take a test. So, um, but there are only like seven countries on the green list. Um, there is general belief. So general belief, and that sounds of yesterday, that um, in two weeks time, they're going to add more countries to the green list. Um, there was huge, um, I think, uproar, the fact that the US was not on the green list originally. And that comes from the likes of big tour operators like TUI, British Airways, um, uh, Heathrow Airport Management, Gatwick Airport, saying, you know, we, we've got everything kind of in place here. And, uh, the United States is, um, uh, is vaccinated, so why? And the government would answer to that, we've just been cautious. But uh, there's been a backlash about it. So I personally, I would believe that in the next, in about two weeks time, that the US will be on, on our green list. So that means just having to take a test, uh, but no, no quarantining. Because at the moment, who wants to come to a country where you've got to go and quarantine for 10 days, two weeks? It's just, uh, you don't want to do that. So, and no one's going to come whilst that's on. I mean, I mean, our, um, I think it was a figure of 19 billion pounds will be lost if we don't open up within the next month, just in terms of uh, uh, revenue, which, um, the UK desperately needs. So I think certainly, I, I, I personally believe, uh, and that's true, I mean, I do have, whilst I don't have a direct phone to Boris Johnson, uh, I do know people that um, work in those circles, move in those circles, and there is a general belief that, that that's what will happen. Um, moving forward into that, so uh, when clients do visit, 
up until certainly the end of July, when you're visiting attractions, everything has to be bought in advance, time tickets, even for the free ones. So like the British Museum, National Gallery, uh, uh, whatever you have to pay for, but all, all the attractions so far are saying you have to buy, purchase in advance. So that's what we're doing. Um, June the 21st is when our roadmap is due to end, which effectively means, which is supposed to mean that all, all uh, safety measures stop and we don't have to wear face masks, there's no social distancing. Um, I think that's highly unlikely. And that's why a lot of the attractions are, are pushing it back to the end of July. So I think visitors visiting this summer will still need to be prepared that they um, they can't just wake up in the morning and say, well, let's go here, let's do this. It does need to be planned in advance and needs to be booked in advance. Yes, you'll get hotel accommodation. Yes, we'll have guides and yes, there'll be drivers. But theatres are running at 50% capacity. Um, uh, two days ago was the first time um, uh, people were allowed in to see football matches. Again, very limited numbers, but it's the first time that's happened in over a year. Uh, so concert venues, clubs, things like that, they're all opening up at just a much more limited capacity. So I know that two years ago, the, the definite trend was, and you probably agree with me, that so many people booking last minute. Yes, people book in advance, but so many last minute. It's like, okay, let's go to Europe so, you know, in two weeks' time. And we used to love that type of business because we kind of thrive on that. But my advice would be that if you've got clients that are entertaining, go book in advance, um, get everything secured up first of all, because it may be that uh, whilst we have access like i've shown you and we do and we, i'm still i've been in contact with all my ticket contacts and people etc but still i think uh, to be prepared one certain trend that i've noticed is that a lot of these clients that are booking now i think they're i think they think they're ahead of the game and i kind of agree with them so those people that are booking july mm -hmm. or september at the moment is the busiest month for bookings People are booking and paying deposit because I think they think, well, we are going to open up. They, they're, you know, they're throwing the dice on that one. And when we do open up, they're going to have everything already booked, as opposed to sort of like the sudden frenzy of people coming in. That's what well, that's my opinion view on it anyway. Right, and I, I've been I've been telling clients that um, you know if, if your risk tolerance is high, go ahead and book because you are going to take advantage of wider availability and better pricing if you book ahead. But there is a chance that things could change. And so you have to have a certain level of risk tolerance to do that. Yeah. If you don't and you wait, there will be a higher price tag literally attached to it and you may have limited choices. So I'm glad yes. we're on the same page there. I'm glad to hear that's yeah. definitely what you see on your side of the pond. Definitely. Okay. definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Paul. I really appreciate you giving insight and inspiration to everybody. It's definitely made me ready to go to the UK again. Now, I don't, I never need much prompting, but you know, um, <laughs> But uh, I do appreciate you being here. You're such a wonderful partner and you always take such fabulous care of my people. And I can't say how much that is appreciated. So, That's very um, yeah. So everybody, we will continue to host our um, virtual events in the future. Please be sure to, to check our website. Our, the page is globalescapes.com slash events to see what we have coming up and be sure to follow us on your favorite social media platforms. We try to keep everybody inspired and up to date there as much as possible. Remember, as we've talked about today, the key is to plan ahead. This is not the time to be spontaneous. This is the time to go ahead and get some plans in place because it will change your outlook on the future. It will give you hope and uh, something to look forward to, which we all need. If the, if the past year has taught us nothing else, it's, we've got to look to the future and be optimistic. So don't think that planning ahead is limited in any way. Go ahead and start thinking about 2022 and even 2023. We're already getting bookings in place for both years. And so don't think that that's too far in advance. So thanks everybody. We want to be your trusted resource as you get back to exploring the world. We want to help you do it. Thanks for tuning in and everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks Thank so much. You. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.